Hello everyone, this video is gonna be a little bit different. I'm obviously in a different setup right now. I am house slash dog sitting for my parents. In this video, I'm gonna be giving you guys suggestions and book recommendations to get you out of a slump. Whether it's been like a few day slump, whether you just read a terrible book and you're slumped after that, whether you have a book hangover over a book you just loved, or whether you've been in a book slump for years, doesn't matter. I think these books that I'm about to recommend will get you out of that slump. So so let's get going. But before we get into the actual book recommendations, I figured I could give you guys some reading slump tips to kind of help you get out of that slump. First tip for getting out of a reading slump is to reread one of your favorite books. And if you are new to reading and you don't really have a favorite book, that's okay. Maybe just find someone else's favorite book and see if it clicks with your taste. There's a guarantee that you will like that book because you've already read it. The second tip I have for getting out of a reading slump is listening to a book. Sometimes sitting down can be really hard for people to do for long periods of time and actually physically reading books. Just ignore that. Audiobooks can be super, super helpful when you're driving, when you're cooking, when you're doing laundry. I find it very easy to put on as background noise. And since you're kind of already doing a task that doesn't require much thinking, having an audiobook to listen to is way easier. It's just like putting on a podcast or listening to music in the background. I would maybe do some digging and find narrators that have a reputation for being really, really dramatic or having really good voice acting skills. Find something that could really keep your attention. This tip is by far my favorite. Find a book with two point of views. The dual point of view really mixes it up every chapter. You're getting like two complete different characters. Most authors do a really good job with dual point of views or multiple point of views to kind of keep you entertained and you're kind of jumping all over the place. One book recommendation for this specifically would be The Atlas Six. There are six different characters. Definitely recommend dual point of views or multiple point of views. The last and final tip that I have would be to start with shorter books. Find books that are under like 250 pages so you can maybe knock it out page wise. So you go like, all right, tonight I'll read 50 pages or tonight I'll read for one hour. I think doing that and splitting it up in increments. So then it's like, okay, if I read 50 pages a night, I'll finish this before the week is even up. Speaking of dual point of views, I just want to recommend you guys two books from an author, a very popular author who does have dual point of view. And I like her writing because it's very, very quick. So Colleen Hoover, she has a lot of books with different point of views. The two that come right to the forefront of my mind when thinking about her dual point of views is Ugly Love with a male and female point of view. They are both of the love interests. Ugly Love is about two characters, Miles and Tate. Miles and Tate are neighbors. Miles is a pilot and Tate is a nurse. They end up kind of forming this agreement to only be neighbor fuck buddies. <laughs> they don't want any strings attached. Tate is kind of like, you'll fall in love with me eventually. And Miles is like, I'll never fall in love with anyone ever again. And you find out that Miles went through something very traumatic in his past and he is kind of against love. Drama ensues. You're watching Tate kind of fall for Miles, which he doesn't want. So it's just this back and forth, really good dual point of view book. The next book recommendation also by Colleen Hoover. I'm just getting Colleen Hoover books out of the way really quick because her books are really short, quick, easy reads. Regretting You also has two point of views, a mother and a daughter. It's a really interesting take on a very messed up situation. So you're seeing the point of view from the daughter at 16 and you're seeing the mom's point of view when she was 16 and pregnant. Really, really sad. So I would be careful when picking this one up. It's definitely a tearjerker as it has a lot of great life lessons in it that I took away a lot from. Since it's dual point of view, I was like, okay, I'll just read like two chapters of each of their point of views and then I'll put the book down, but you could not put this book down. And the ending was the sweetest ending I've ever read. And that high school romance broke my heart. It was amazing. So I would definitely recommend Regretting You. Going on to the next kind of category I have is the lighthearted category. These two books that I'm about to tell you about are very, very lighthearted. There's no drama. There's no twists or anything like that. It'll make you smile. Can adults drink hot chocolate? <laughs> 
I mean, I'm drinking it right now, but still. The first lighthearted book is The Sun is Also a Star by Nicola Yoon. I've talked about this book in a few other videos. The Sun is Also a Star is a story about a girl and a boy who meet, and it is insta-lovey. Very well done. It's not too cringy. I really liked it. They meet on the street in New York one day. The boy is kind of infatuated with her at first and just very interested in her. They end up spending that whole day together, and she's like, well, I'm moving tomorrow. Like, I'm moving back to Jamaica tomorrow, like from New York, like I'm leaving, I'll never see you again. They basically just fall in love this one day. And then the last chapter, of course, you're like bawling your eyes out because of how sweet it is. And I wish I had the physical copy of the book with me. It's at my house right now. But if you flip through it, there's some like cute graphics and like they send emails and texts to each other and it's set up in the form of like a text message. So it's really easy to read. So I think getting out of a slump is it's easy with that book and it's also not even 200 pages. Or maybe it's 200 pages. It's really short. So that's a really good short lighthearted book for you. The next lighthearted book, which I will mention all the time, House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. This one will wreck you. It made my heart grow like 10 sizes when I was reading it. It is about this world who you can be born with magical powers and some people are born with not so great magical powers. There's this man in this book who is a kind of like a social worker and he ends up getting sent to this orphanage where these kids live who have dangerous magical magical powers. He ends up just falling in love with all of the little kids and it's very sweet. The owner of the orphanage is also very sweet and the social worker kind of gets tangled into everyone's life there and becomes a very important figure. Fast paced. One thing I hate in books is when the first like four chapters nothing has happened. This book it's like the first chapter something happens, the second chapter something happens, the third. It's just like every single chapter there's some event that kind of pulls you in and makes you want to read more. I have three book series that you should read if you were in a slump. Now series you might be like why would I read a series when I'm in a slump? I just need something really short and fast paced. But trust me, these three series I'm about to tell you about are really good books to kind of get you on a roll with reading because each of these series has three books within them. So they're all trilogies. The first trilogy is actually one that I just read last week. <laughs> get a Life, Chloe Brown, Take a Hint, Danny Brown, and Act Your Age, Eve Brown. It was the Brown Sisters trilogy by Talia Hibbert. And wow, these were the quickest, most easy reads I've read in a really long time and I needed that. I needed a series that I could just sit and binge read and I did. I binge read all of these books in like seven days. I was in love with these sisters. Basically this whole trilogy is about each sister and their kind of issues. Every sister has their own category of issues that's going on whether it's mental illness or ADD or autism. Like there's a lot of stuff going on within these sisters lives and seeing them kind of take a change in their life. Each sister kind of has like a goal set and they're trying to accomplish something and along the way they meet someone and they hit it off with people and stuff gets really steamy. <laughs> I'm just saying if you don't like reading smut don't pick up these books. And the next trilogy that I recommend is one that I particularly didn't really like but I know how popular it is and I know how many people do like it and I think it's a really good intro to fantasy romance. If I had read it before a lot of other fantasy romance that I've read, I probably would love it. The Cruel Prince or the Folk of the Air trilogy is, I mean, I didn't really like it, <laughs> but it was still, I can understand why someone would like it, especially if you're in a slump or you're trying to get introduced to a new genre. I think that for fantasy romance, this is a great genre. There's not a lot of smut, but it is a lot of like tension. People say it's enemies to lovers. In my opinion, this is kind of what bothered me. It seemed more of like bully romance, like a bullies to lovers situation or like bullies to enemies to friends to lovers. It was very weird. So I wasn't really a fan of the whole bullying thing. I don't really understand the attraction in that. The story itself was great. It is about this character named Jude and she is human, but she was taken away at a young age into the fey world. So they're made fun of, they don't fit in. It's just like a bad situation for them, but Jude kind of makes the best of it. She's kind of like the tomboy. She's like, well, fine, if I'm gonna be the human here, I wanna 
learn how to fight and I want to learn how to be really tough in this world to kind of navigate my way through it. And she meets a dude along the way, obviously, but this, you know, we all have different opinions. So please pick this series up and see if you like it for yourself. The next trilogy is the Ark of the Scythe. I read this like a year ago. I kind of wish I was back in that world. <laughs> Scythe is about these two characters who live in a world, it's kind of an alternate world or a futuristic version of our world where the population is getting too much. It's just getting too big, there's too many people. The government kind of created these people called scythes who kill people, but in a very humanitarian way, they kill people very politely. <laughs> but you kind of have to be like invited to this scythe organization. I kind of forget what happened, like how they got there. I'm pretty sure like another scythe just comes up to your house and says like, hey, you have to become a scythe now. And like, that's, that's what happens. These two characters who kind of get invited or kind of get like taken into this scythe world named Citra and Rowan, they are trained by this head scythe and he trains with them. He kind of takes them along on his killings. There's a lot to do and you have to meet this quota of kills. It's really interesting. I'm describing it in a really terrible way because I haven't read it in a really long time. It's something that gets your mind off of the real world and kind of puts you in this alternate world that I think is really helpful when it comes to a reading slump. That is it. That is all of these suggestions I have right now. I definitely want to do a part two to this video. Being in a slump is obviously no fun, but you can get out of it. I definitely suggest fast paced, shorter books, full point of views or multiple point of views, and maybe like a series so you can kind of get attracted to some characters and kind of hold them in your heart long term. Thank you for tuning in and definitely check out my other videos that I've posted in the comments below. Give me a book recommendation. I will see you guys next week.